In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us answer the question. Stocks, are we looking at healthy rotation or concerning distribution? In last week's video, we covered this chart in detail and it told us to be open to the stock market rally broadening out. The breadth data in the upper right hand corner of your screen is from Wednesday of this week, March 27th, and it aligns with the concept of a broader rally. And it's probably fair to say when all 11 S&P 500 sectors advance, we have a broad rally. Heading into the PCE inflation data that will be released on Good Friday when the markets are closed, let's revisit and update the topic from the March 15th video where we asked if fears relative to inflation could trigger a serious market correction and or bear market. And we looked at the ETF ratio of TBT relative to XLK, shorting 20 plus year US Treasury bonds, TLT, relative to XLK, the S&P 500 tech sector. We were still in risk on mode in December of 2021. And as we noted a couple of weeks ago, if you're very concerned about inflation, you probably do not want to own long-term Treasury bonds or TLT, hence TBT, becomes attractive, and stocks in general, including XLK, and the value of future earnings become less attractive when inflation starts to spike. Thus, in the present day, this is the type of look that we want to avoid. This is calendar year 2022. And after stocks bottom, this is the risk on look we want to embrace. The look during the S&P 500 correction in 2023 and the return to risk on in Q4 of 2023. And two weeks ago, using the chart on your screen dated March 14th, we noted the market didn't seem overly concerned about inflation at that time. And walking forward from March 15th, this is the type of look here that we would want to avoid, this type of turn here. If we fast forward and examine the same ratio after the close on Wednesday, March 27th, you can see not a whole lot has changed. We don't have anything today that looks like this Q1 2022 and we don't have anything today that looks like the period during the correction in 2023. We also noted in the March 15th video this type of spike in the XLE to XLK ratio during the bear market in 2022 is something that we would probably want to avoid in the present day. You can see the move in the same ratio was much more muted during the correction in 2023. How does the exact same chart look on March 27th? Well, relative to the magnitude of the increase in fear relative to inflation in Q1 of 2022, and the magnitude of the shift during the correction last year, relatively muted thus far. We noted two weeks ago that XLE had been basing for a long period of time. If we fast forward to the same anchored volume weighted average price chart dated March 27th, this looks like healthy expansion. This looks like a rally that's trying to broaden out exactly what we talked about last week. Diversified basket of bonds relative to XLK, the tech sector ETF. This is the look at the early stages of the correction. 2023, a relatively muted look over here two weeks ago. If we fast forward and look at the same ratio on March 27th. Not a lot of change there. In fact, if we zoom in, it's a pretty tame look. Two weeks ago, we said we would prefer to have the ratio of SPY relative to SHY, one to three year treasury bonds, avoid a look like this. This is during the correction in 2023. Two weeks ago, we said still looks pretty good up here, upper right hand corner of your screen. If we look at the same chart on March 27th, it's not screaming imminent correction. Similar situation two weeks ago, we said growth stocks, large cap growth stocks. This is the look during the correction in 2023. This was the look two weeks ago with SCHG trading at 9190. If we fast forward two weeks, SCHG has climbed above this short term period of consolidation and it's higher trading at 9292. XLK, two weeks ago, we said we really don't want to see something like this, a sharp reversal, 
Moving average crossover. We didn't have it two weeks ago. Blue well above green here. We still don't have anything like that on March 27th. Looking at very short-term moving averages here to try to get a jump on any potential shift. This is the 8-day moving average in blue all the way out to the 50-day moving average in gold. Correction 2023. Said it really didn't look too bad two weeks ago. If we fast forward and look at the same chart of the NASDAQ on March 27th, probably fair to say it looks better than it did two weeks ago. Price is above an upward sloping 8-day moving average. The 8-day, the fastest moving average is on the top of the stack. The 50-day, the slowest moving average, is on the bottom. Even using what are ridiculously fast moving averages relative to our time frame, there's nothing particularly alarming on the chart in front of us. Similar situation, SPY two weeks ago really didn't look that bad on March 14th if we fast forward. Hovering right around a new 52-week high with a full-bore bullish look. 8-day on top, 50-day on the bottom. From a leadership perspective, RSP relative to SPY weekly, March 14th, we covered it two weeks ago. Not a lot of progress on a relative basis. RSP in isolation looks fine. If we fast forward two weeks later to March 27th, some improvement here, but we would need to see more to consider adding significantly to our current position of RSP. Adding to it in a moderate manner? Yeah, that's possible. Similar situation, we covered this two weeks ago. Small caps, which have had a good week this week relative to XLK on March 14th. Again, a weekly chart with the 30, 40, 50, and 200 week moving averages two weeks ago. It's got a full bore bearish look, much like the previous chart. Some improvement, but nothing significant at this point. If this starts to look more like this over here, then small caps would move up on the we may consider it scale. As we noted last week, even this sharp counter trend move, and this is a significant period of outperformance here, was just that. It was a counter trend move that ended up being fully retraced. Regardless of the strength of the primary trend, there's always going to be counter trend moves where IWM outperforms XLK. And regardless of what this relative chart looks like, it's extremely important to note. In isolation, the NASDAQ looks healthy at this point. In isolation, SPY looks healthy at this point, even on a semi-ridiculously short time frame for our long-term goals. Even tech, which has been treading water and consolidating, the fastest moving average, the 8-day moving average, is on the top of this stack. And XLK is above an upward sloping 50-day moving average. Similar situation, SCHG, blue, the fastest moving average on top, price above the 8-day. And using the same moving averages, IWM looks good in isolation. Small caps, healthy. But on a short-term basis, trying to break above this high that was made in Q4 of last year. And even though RSP, from a longer-term perspective, has work to do relative to SPY, the chart in isolation looks healthy. We own RSP. Nothing particularly concerning about this very short-term oriented chart on March 27th. We could say the same thing about longer-term charts. Thus, when we look at all of these charts, including small caps in isolation, equal weight S&P 500 in isolation, right now, based on the charts in front of us, any pickup in performance in small caps, the equal weight S&P 500, industrials, energy, all of that at this point appears to be healthy rotation. Since the market is closed for Good Friday, Thursday is the last trading day of the week. This portion of the video is being recorded after the close on Thursday. This is a noisy chart, but it will help clients put into context some of the very small shifts that we made in our allocations this week. This is another example of the breakdown that we talked about in last week's video and earlier in this week's video. You can see something similar is happening in 2024 over here. It's important for us to understand. In the previous case, and by no means will the coming weeks and months mirror the previous case, 
but it does provide some context. XLK underperformed RSP for approximately six months after this breakdown, which is similar to what occurred last week and this week in these type of ratios. The same can be said for XLK relative to SPY. It underperformed in this six month window and XLK significantly underperformed IWM small caps, the Russell 2000 ETF in this window. Having said that, from a longer term perspective, eventually the primary trend reasserted itself and XLK started to outperform IWM, SPY, and RSP. Thus, any additions or adds relative to RSP and IWM take into account that the primary trend still favors XLK over RSP, SPY, and IWM. All of this helps with this topic. There's another way to look at it. Here's the point that we've been referencing in November of 2020. From November 12th, 2020 to March 12th, 2021, which is approximately four months, IWM, the Russell 2000, killed it. it was up 37%. RSP, on a relative basis, killed it up 21%. Having said that, you didn't need to abandon SPY, XLK, and SCHG in that window because they did extremely well too. It's not very often that SPY goes up 12% in a four-month window. So in this case, this type of move that we've been covering in the last two weeks, if something similar happens, and that's a big if, that should be good for all risk assets, including SPY, XLK, and SCHG. But we don't want to get too cute trying to move our chess pieces around from a shorter term perspective because walking forward from March 12, 2021 that for the most part ended IWM's outperformance. If we extend that exact same chart so the left side pinned here on November 12, 2020 is consistent but now we're taking it out to December 27, 2021 before the bear market started. You can see IWM basically consolidated after that. And when we reach December 27th, 2021, XLK was the clear winner. And then RSP, SCHG, SPY, and IWM was bringing up the rear. The shifts that we made this week are based on the facts that we have in hand. During Thursday's session, you can see there's no clear winner between IWM small caps and RSP, March 28th, 10.27 a.m. Eastern Time. Moving averages 20 day all the way out to the 250. Home builders relative to RSP says something about economic expectations, inflation expectations, Fed expectations, and simple supply and demand in the home market. But Q1 of 2022, this is when the bear market started. This really doesn't look anything like March 28th. Regional banks really haven't done much relative to RSP in 2024. This is that similar concept of bonds, LQD, corporate bonds, breaking down relative to RSP. Another chart that says RSP from a probability perspective is probably a better place for our capital relative to bonds. IEI, U.S. Treasury bonds here, LQD, corporate bonds here. Now, while there are similarities to November 12th of 2020, and this is the major outperformance by IWM, the Russell 2000 small caps. There's also some significant differences at this point. We don't want to get overly wound up about these moves. Notice here, SPY equal weight S&P 500 relative to RSP. This is where the ratio was on November 11th, 2020. The ratio was already below the 250 day moving average when this move occurred here which is similar to what's happening again in 2024. So if we compare the look over here, the relative weakness in SPY relative to RSP is much more pronounced on November 11th, 2020 than what we have in the present day. The ratio is still well above that 250 day moving average in black. Now, obviously, much like this window here, that can change rapidly. But at this point, it hasn't changed yet. And the last thing this ratio did was make a new 52 week high. Small moves that we made this week were somewhat hedging our bets. 
No clear winner here, foreign stocks relative to RSP. This favors RSP, but this could act as potential support, and this could act as potential support. But the jury's still out. This is global stocks VT relative to RSP sitting right on that 250-day moving average in black. Fear of inflation, Q1 2022. Look at the slope of the black 250-day moving average here. This is January of 2022. Contrast it with the slope in 2024 and where the ratio is relative to the 250-day in black. This significantly different from this. And this move here started in August of 2021. Fear of inflation, time to get defensive. Really doesn't look anything like March 2024 over here. You can pause your video player. This is defensive staples, XLP, divided by RSP. Compare and contrast the look of the 250-day in black here and here in Q1 of 2022. Similar situation, economically sensitive retail falling off a cliff in Q1 of 2022. Not the case in March of 2024, above a flattening and trying to turn up 250-day in black. We have some exposure to gold, and we're happy that it's doing well, but it still has work to do relative to SPY and relative to RSP. The odds would improve for gold if the ratio can get out into this area here and or this area here. There's some additional evidence of the rally trying to broaden out, getting broader than just large cap stocks. But based on the evidence that we have in front of us, we want to take a measured approach. This is IJR, iShares core small cap relative to RSP. It just made a new 52 week low. If you want to play devil's advocate relative to inflation, especially before Friday's PCE report, you can make an argument that this, March 28th, 2024, looks a lot like Q1 of 2022. Now, having said that, this is small cap value VOE divided by RSP. If we look at VOE in isolation, you can make an argument that this is where concerns about inflation began in 2022. This is a mass period of confusion on that topic. And this is a breakout in 2024, polar opposite of this move here in 2022. We're not making any assumptions here. We'll see how it plays out. Regardless of everything that we just said, this is a bullish breakout for VOE after a long-term period, one, two plus years of consolidation. And this ETF is not based on large cap stocks. So this is a broadening outlook. Just as this is a broadening outlook. Just this week, just the last couple of sessions, IWM, Russell 2000, has broken above this area here from 2022 that acted as resistance. The longer this holds, the more meaningful it becomes. The longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. We either get a bullish breakout or bearish breakdown. Right now, this is a bullish breakout attempt. It's also noteworthy that this breakout above this level here also enabled IWM on Thursday to print a new 52-week high. Last week, we said it was possible for small caps to start out performing. For four sessions, they've done that. This is also most likely noteworthy. IWM is also trying to break out relative to GOVT, a core U.S. Treasury bond ETF. Notice the slope of the 250-day moving average in black here and contrast it with the slope for the same ratio in Q1 of 2022. The slope is turning up just as it's attempting a breakout. Longer above, the more meaningful it becomes. As noted earlier in the video, it appears that the broadening that we're seeing in the markets in terms of sectors, sectors outside tech, and in terms of capitalization, mid caps and small caps are doing better. It appears to be healthy for everything, healthy for risk on. And that aligns with the studies that we completed and presented in these videos in Q1 and Q2 of 2022. 
with the studies that we completed and presented in the videos in Q4 and in January of this year. And all of it aligns with this study here from Sentiment Trader. After similar precedents, the S&P was higher every time over the ensuing two, three, six, and 12 months. We don't want to get too cute in this window. Continuing with the weight of the evidence theme, our friend Dean, hot off the presses, Thursday, 2.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Three components triggered an alert over the last month, prompting a new composite signal. Dean told me that from a historical perspective, 86% of the cases the market was higher a year later with the last loss occurring in 1948. Here's Dean's Twitter handle. Sentiment Trader's Twitter handle here. This and this also align with this lower right hand corner of your screen. Stock market has performed consistently well after the 10% correction that ended in October of last year. It's very, very easy to get complacent. It's important for us to keep in mind, even in the context of a secular trend, things can be very, very difficult. Drawdowns can be very, very painful. And all of this needs to be built into our default psychology and into our models. We've been saying for several months in these videos that the primary secular trend remains firmly intact. We don't want to let excessive fear about normal corrections and pullbacks end up being harmful to our long-term returns and our long-term objectives. This concept also applies to being overly concerned about being invested in the market leaders every single day of the year. So let's quickly close out the video by putting some context around this concept of the secular trend being firmly intact and the concept that excessive pullback fear and the concept that excessive leadership fear can be very harmful to long-term returns. Exact same concepts that we covered last week, but we used monthly charts. We're nearing the end of the quarter. So let's look at the Chande trend meter on the bottom of your screen, the S&P 500 quarterly, the main portion of the chart with simple moving averages. And let's look at the trends in price action in these three windows, 1950 to 1968, 1982 to 2000, and 2013 to the present day. It's pretty easy to see that this window here, in terms of the strength of the quarterly trend, looks similar to this window here, which looks similar to the present day window, which began in 2013. And it's also easy to see that in those windows, Price action made stands near the upward sloping moving averages. All of these areas highlighted in green. And it's also easy to see that the look of the quarterly trend meter in the blue windows is discernibly different from the orange windows. The first orange window, 1969 to 1981. The second orange window, 2001 to 2012. Trend looks weak and vulnerable here weak and vulnerable in this orange box here in a manner that never occurs in the 1950 to 1968 window, never occurs in the 1982 to 2000 window, and has yet to occur since 2013. Chart dated March 27th, 2024. And just as the quarterly trend meter is discernibly different, price action relative to the moving averages discernibly different in this window here, this look here, similar commentary here. And it's also fair to say, upper right hand corner of your screen, that the present day, March of 2024, it looks a lot more like the favorable periods and really doesn't look anything like the unfavorable periods. All of this commentary based on the chart in front of us. If the chart and the data start to drift from the base case, then we'll learn something as well. Now let's use the same concepts to talk about excessive pullback fear and excessive leadership fear potentially harming long-term returns. You can see on this quarterly chart between 1950 and 1968, upper right-hand corner of your screen, the S&P 500 does quite well. So let's just say stocks do exceedingly well 
if you're able to hold them or maintain a reasonable amount of exposure to stocks between point A and point B. And if you try to get too cute during these counter trend moves, it's very, very possible that what you'll end up doing is harming your long-term returns. So as long as it looks like a secular trend, we want to take a measured approach. And if and when that changes, we want to be open to relatively significant changes to our portfolio allocation. We'd want to be much more defensive in this window here relative to this window here. And in this window here, we'd be much more open to riding out volatility in a reasonable manner based on the charts and data in hand. Now, ultimately, the strength of the trend and price action relative to the long-term moving averages assist us in terms of trying to get to the point B that could be several years down the road. Thus, we're interested in trying to stay aligned with the long-term trend. And if we're using the exact same moving averages and the exact same trend meter down here, everything that we just said about the previous window applies to the 1982 to 2000 window. Our goal is to try to navigate to a point B that could be several years down the road and stay aligned with the long-term trend. Now, if we use the exact same quarterly moving averages, you can see the equal weight S&P 500 relative to SPY right now is in a downtrend. And obviously, that's subject to change at any time. But on this chart here, Q1 of 2024, RSP is underperforming by almost 3%. If this ratio chart starts to take on a look more like this, then that would be relevant. But that's not what we have today. And if we want to try to stay aligned with the long-term trend, a trend that looks like this or this, then we want to try to avoid overreacting to counter trend moves, either counter trend moves in risk assets or counter trend moves in leadership. It's important to understand what the trends look like and what the relative trends look like on multiple time frames, from very long term time frames to short term time frames, eight day out to the 50 day. And today, what we have, we don't want to try to get too cute. Growth stocks and small caps both look constructive. In this type of market, we want to make sure that we're not over trading or over managing or over shifting our allocation. This concept has applied every single day since the October 2022 low in the S&P 500 index. Inflation, interest rates, and Fed policy, they're wild cards. What do we mean by that? They can make things shift in a rapid manner as they did in Q1 of 2022. Maximum flexibility, 100% of the time. Thus, we'll continue to take it day by day. We don't want to make any assumptions about any topic on any time frame. That includes leadership, and that includes trends in long-term leadership. Everything is subject to change. Right now, we have a positive long-term trend, and our goals are long-term. Thus, our thinking needs to be long-term. And if we want to make sure that excessive pullback or correction fear doesn't become harmful to our long-term returns, it's important that we maintain realistic expectations about how markets operate in the real world. Even in the context of very strong secular trends, it is not unusual to have 6 to 14% givebacks or drawdowns. And in some cases, even in the context of a secular bull market, those drawdowns can be anywhere from 14 to 35%. All of that needs to be built into our game plan and our way of thinking. And we all know, even if the secular trend remains intact for several more years, if we're going to successfully navigate from a point A to a point B that could be several years down the road, it's important that we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes 
and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.